then there was the Wilson meeting that George was talking about that, that was, I believe, a very effective meeting. It's, you know, it's the, there's so many projects that I think of that Wilson could use, you know, like convincing somebody to come and rebuild the linger longer wide and some things like that as they echo at the um, center. But um, putting the limitations on it is something that that group of maybe 20, 25 people could accomplish in a year. You know, you put up the big ideas and they get smaller and they get smaller and then you get down to the reality. <laughs> so it was, um, I thought it was very effective. Yeah, they have patient ideas. Oh, yeah. we had it. And some of them they'll be working on the long-term ideas, but the idea of getting some short-term ones that you could accomplish right. in a year, it's always a good thing to get your momentum building. Yeah. And there's places we can partner with some of those, but it's very much coming from them. Uh, it's these ideas and, and, and the work and the, the impetus to have the conversations. It's not us telling we'll see, go we'll have conversations about these things. Uh, it's all coming from them, and it's a, a very good energy right it really inspired to see. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's energy later that can be brought forward. You know, but my idea was, you know, you know Whispered Moisture, I think, is a um, classic name for a group. Yeah, it's wonderful. Whistling Oyster has been there for decades. You know, before anybody moved there. Um, anyway, it was, yeah, it was very, very interesting meeting. And sort of like in Fort Warden, it was brought up that Fort Warden is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, made full. And, and the city I'm, is working very diligently through the PDA to keep Fort Warden open. And uh, they're agreeing, that they're working on it, that the, the city, uh, or the PDA take over the <coughs> in operations of Fort Warden, but the state keep ownership of the board and um, and obligate itself to capital improvement. So um, I was going somewhere with that and it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> well the, the legislature's going somewhere with that. We don't know where they're going. Yeah, we don't know where that's going. <laughs> but, um, well it's interesting to note that among the capital projects uh, throughout the state college system the number one capital project is the uh, refurbishing of the building at uh, Fort Warden, um, which is is good news, but it's not uh, the end of the story because no one knows if the capital budget is going to be funded or to what extent they are funded, and how much of that will go to the uh, to the college system. I, I remember my point was that um, with Fort Warden. They get two of two re remodeled for Peninsula College and Goddard College. The hope is that that will get enough inspiration going in the fort to, to inspire somebody from the outside to come in and uh, take the, um, the old school house and turn it into a, a hotel, basically. And, uh, and that's that was my kind of thought. My like, well seen was if you get this impetus, this movement. And then you try to reach out for other companies to come in and take on some of these bigger projects. They do have a momentum. They do. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's been interesting. Uh, I've always said you talking to me. I was at that meeting, I was thinking about an interaction I had with a, a school student about uh, doorbelling down in the school at right high school. Going home uh, one day, and so you know, talked to several people who couldn't vote, but uh, that's okay. But I always like asking you know, young people, "What do you, uh, what do you think the county ought to be doing? What do you think you know, this part ought to be doing?" And there's been a real consistency over the years. Of, of two things. The first thing is always you know things to do, you know, so that you know, your, your friends or your siblings can stay out of trouble. You know, they realize that that's really important part. It's not a matter of entertaining. But the second thing is always clean the place up. You know, because people want to be proud of where they live. 
you know, it makes perfect sense. But, uh, you know, that, it, that is consistent no matter where you are in the county over the years. It's, uh, and it's their world. So I try to remember those two things. Mm -hmm. Glad you mentioned uh, talking to the uh, high school students. The Kiwanis on Sunday is going to have a, a presentation uh, for uh, student or youth leadership for about 15 kids. We've really done outstanding things uh, in and for the county. Uh, and I think it's great that Kiwanis is recognizing this and encouraging uh, these young folks. And also, uh, <coughs> we hear often, legitimately, we need to see some uh, economic uh, growth and movement. Uh, this Saturday, there's going to be groundbreaking for the Research Center for the Historical Society. Um, that means construction jobs, and uh, a very welcome addition to that, uh, that organization that does so much to remember the history of this uh, of the county here. Tomorrow there's the uh, certification of the election. We all know how it turned out, but uh, it becomes official uh, after tomorrow morning. Yeah, I <coughs> you brought the Tom Mahan Awards uh, for Columbus. I've done that uh, for several years, and it's, it's always an inspiring thing because you get to uh, they, they basically pair you up with uh, one of the award winners and their family, and so you get to sit with them and talk with them. And, uh, to know uh, what they've been doing uh, more, and they, they act, it's actually pretty easy to give you a big script, you know, to uh, go from to uh, help present the award. Uh, but it's uh, something that a number of the leaders in the community come come forward, you know, to honor these team leaders. And uh, it's uh, you, you just always get so much out of it. Yeah, at least I always have. And so uh, I'm sure I'll do it again. Lead into our conversation later today about what we're doing with you. I'm going to say on my schedule, uh, you know, we do have uh, places where we do things uh, regionally rather than uh, just this one county and with regional partners and uh, uh, partly. Uh, going to Only Cat this evening, you know, and that's one of the places that we do uh, work regionally with Clallam County and uh, work uh, on a lot of the programs that uh, are facing a lot of change. Uh, next, uh, well, as soon as the legislature uh, decides their budget and as the federal government decides their budget, you could see a lot of change in the playing field of how things are funded and what is funded and what gaps maybe emerge in our community that weren't there before in services. And so it is going to be a real challenging time. It's something that we deal with uh, in just a variety of regional ways, so uh, people are more likely to see it through Holy Cap in that area, the Joint Housing Authority, or through O3A, uh, which is four counties, or the RSM that you're on, uh, with three counties, there's different boards. We address those issues through a regional basis rather than just a local basis. Uh, so uh, there's there's work being done. Now speaking of uh, Jim's gone. So of RSN, uh, there was what some people consider to be kind of an unfair distribution of the penalties. And uh, last week we had a meeting of the RSN and that was redistributed. So uh, our local mental health centers know that it's such a risk. It's, we put a cap on how much they'd be expected to uh, to divvy up. And uh, down in Olympia, I was speaking with um, Senator Hargroves and his staff on uh, ways to restructure that entire penalty system because we don't really have a lot of control uh, over who's assigned to Western Washington State Hospital. <coughs> and it's, uh, it, uh, it puts a uh, small mental health centers at risk. So there's, there's some good movement there, and I was really pleased that uh, the commissioners from, uh, um, from Kitsap County and from Town, they were willing to engage in a more equitable distribution. Speaking of 
regional meetings of the Hudson Alcorn and Council last week in Mason um, County. And that we're moving forward with trying to get the septic system, the septic um, program for Shorebank Cascadia and Hudson Alcorn and Council put together some time ago, which is a revolving loan program where um, the loans to <coughs> do or repair faulty septics are based on your ability to pay. You might end up paying 6% for a loan. You might end up paying 4% or 2% for a loan, depending on how you qualify. Or you might be able to get a septic system put in and not have to pay it back until you or your heirs sell the property. <coughs> And since it's a revolving fund and they have this ability, certain people <coughs> can, just can't afford it, have the ability not to pay it back. As a matter of fact, that's interest free until you sold the property. Um, it kind of made it more difficult to keep a revolving fund going. So um, the goal now, that, that fund was put together with the Shorebank Cascadia. Um, came up with a private money of $5 million and the state put in $3 million. And I can see 260 some septic systems have been replanted, um, repaired. And, um, so now there, I would like to get your support later as well, um, once I get a draft of letter to see if we can get the state, they have no money, <laughs> but uh, $1.5 million in the capital fund capital budget, then we would match the other 1.5 short bank cascade uh, to keep this program going. This is a really important program. Yeah, it takes, a, 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 it has to be thought of over a longer period of time. You know, if you're going to have people keep until they sell the property, uh, you have to be capitalized enough up front so that you know, can start having that revolving fund effect. Uh, it's uh, right. And so you really have to have enough at the beginning or to load it enough periodically early to get it going. Well, this is an extremely generous loan program. So very effective. Very effective. It's 260 some septic systems that have been um, re repaired or rebuilt. Or but it, uh, and some of them are extremely expensive. Oh, yeah. Is the right close to the water. Well, it's a real challenge. It's like business with huge accounts receivable and uh, very little cash flow in. Mm -hmm. um, in the long run, uh, we'll uh, be able to be self sustaining, we hope. And the really positive thing about this program is that there is a fault reception system and environmental health has to go talk to the families about it and say, well, we have this. Program, yeah, it really helps a lot. It's a way to respond. Anything else we guys? Um, well, I plan on going down to Olympia tomorrow for the State Council on Aging. Uh, it's a different day than usual because the senior lobby day is this week. Uh, weather permitting, you know, I uh, had hail at my house this morning back before I went out the door. So we'll um, see what it's like tomorrow, too. Um, and then the uh, Peninsula Deve Deve Development District and RCD on uh, Thursday in Blinn is another op opportunity where we collaborate with Cloud County uh, you know, mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. entities for economic development reasons. So. Yeah, I got a mm -hmm. The weather can make it a little easier to travel. We kind of count on it, you know, being easy to zip down there and back. And that two hour drive can be a little different someday. Oh, Mount Walker's a beautiful area. <coughs> oh, yeah. We may spend a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. But it's, there's another route. But yeah. Mm -hmm. That well, was great. My last trip through Mount Walker was perfect because the snow line was about this high above the highway. Mm -hmm. It was just gorgeous. Oh, yeah. It was dry. 